ومن آياته أن خلق لكم من أنفسكم أزواجا لتسكنوا إليها الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له يقول الحق وهو يهدي السبيل وأشهد أن سيدنا والنبي محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد My beloved brothers and sisters in Islam إن شاء الله تعالى today I'm going to start an episode a series more like on um, a happy relationship a happy marriage the reason why I thought this was important is because the biggest or the largest amount of questions the largest amount of concerns that is put towards my direction it is due to marriage issues people complaining about their marriage is not being good also um, people getting married uh, without having correct understandings of what the rulings of marriage are, the responsibilities and the rights, and the list goes on. And I believe this is something that a lot of people would admit who deal with the Muslim community's affairs would say, yes, I myself, the largest amount of questions and concerns in which I, de I, I, I deal with is uh, marriage-related matters. Divorce related matters. Well, it was mentioned Sheikh Abd Aziz ibn Baz, alayhi rahmatullahi, may Allah have mercy upon him. He was asked once in his, uh, in his office, and he was asked, alayhi rahmatullah, what are the largest amount of questions that you deal with? What is, it, what, what, what is it related to? And he said, divorces and marriage issues. So, because this is one of the biggest issues which people question and they ask, it then deserves, inshallah ta'ala, for it to be dealt with correctly. Sometimes I, I see two married couples, a wife and a husband, and they talk about their relationships and that which they are in. And when they talk about their relationships, or when they speak about their relationship, they speak about it as though they're in it because of the two, less of two harms. You know? Irtikabu. Uh, taking the less of the two evils they're trying to say that if I leave my wife right now my children are going to suffer and they're going to find hardship so I'm only in this for my children so the, the love and the, you know, the appreciation of one another has actually died out so since that's the case and Allah Taala did not legislate marriage for that he did not legislate marriage so the person takes the less of two evils Rather, Allah Taala made us get married, or permitted for us to get married, and urged us to get married because of uh, what He mentioned in this ayah in Surah Al Rum. Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala He says, "وَمِنْ آيَاتِ أَنْ خَلَقَ لَكُمْ مِنْ أَنْفُسِكُمْ أَزْوَاجًا لِتَسْكُنُوا إلَيْهَا وَجَعَلَ بَيْنَكُمْ مَوَدَّةً وَرَحْمَةً إِنَّ فِي ذَلِكَ لَآيَاتٍ لِقَوْمٍ يَتَفَكَّرُونَ." So in the ayah, Allah Taala He says, "The reason why the two spouses." In why Allah created one another for each other and for them to be with one another is so they can they can have mawadda rahmah compassion and mercy appreciation of one another so the way I plan inshallah ta'ala to deal with this issue is to rely on 40 hadiths 40 hadiths of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that Talk about how to gain happy, a happy marriage. Is there anyone we believe greater than the Prophet ﷺ? Is there anyone who would solve our problems, give us the right cure, than our Messenger Muhammad ﷺ? The answer is, without a shadow of a doubt, no. So 40 hadiths. In today's episode or today's series, inshallah ta'ala, I will be idhn al kareem be speaking about Two hadiths. That so the title of these two hadiths is going to be al-ahadith al-warida, huh? hadiths that have come 
in what? At targhibu fi zawaj. Urging you to get married. And the reason why these two particular hadiths should be what we start with is because a lot of people look at people's relationships and how it's going and where it's heading and they realize the divorce rate is going up. People are complaining about their relationships. So what happens to the youngsters and the youths is they look at that and they think, mm -mm, I don't want to get married. And they get put off from getting married. So two hadiths to urge them to get married. And then inshallah ta'ala, if time allows me, in this series, inshallah ta'ala, I might mention another two hadiths, which is what? Al-Hadith Al-Warida Fi Husn al A hadith pertaining to choosing the right individual. Now that we've told you to get married, and that we've advised, the hadiths have mentioned, and we've told you the hadiths pertaining to that, then choosing the right individual. Choosing the right individual you want to get married to. Because it's not just get married to any old woman, or the woman, it shouldn't be for her to get to marry to any old guy. But rather there should be a correct preference that she should set herself. There is a criteria that she has to look for in the person she wants to get married to. That works for the man and the... Just yesterday I was... Um, just yesterday I was with a group of youngsters, youths. And the uh, questions that they were putting forward to me. We weren't even in London. We went outside London. And uh, we, uh, we camped outside. It was a camping that we did. And so the discussions that I was ha having with them, I realized that it is a very big concern for the youngsters and the youth, the issues of marriage. And when I've looked at those who've spoken about these issues, a lot of them do not bring the answers of those questions from the Nusus al Wahyin, the Kitab and the Sunnah. Rather, they get it from their own, their own intellects and the way they feel. And that isn't a problem. Rather, it's needed. Your experience is also a form to guide and to help. No doubt about that. But the first place to get it from, it should be the Kitab and the Sunnah. Because as we always say, my beloved brothers and sisters, Allah created us. And it's the same Allah that created us, the one who legislated. And the way we are created, the way Allah modified us and made us, there's nothing that can answer those concerns of us and our needs except the revelation, except the textual evidences. They're the only things that can meet our needs. So inshallah ta'ala, without, without any further ado, I'm going to start with the first hadith. This hadith, Al-Imam Al-Bukhari and Muslim both narrated it. Al-Imam Bukhari and Muslim both narrated it. Min hadith Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiyallahu ta'ala anhu. On the hadith of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, may Allah be pleased with him. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud said, Kunna ma'an Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We were with the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, ala najidu shay'an. And we couldn't, we, we, wouldn't, we couldn't find anything. Faqala lana Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the Messenger said to us, he said to us, Ya ma'ashar al-shabaab, O youngsters, youth, man istata'a, any one of you who is able al ba'ata any one of you who has the physical ability who also has the financial ability both meanings inshallah the ba'a means a man who has the physical ability to f to fulfill the desires of his spouse or the youngster the youth who has financial ability, his money. فَلْيَتَزَوَّدْ Get married. Why? فَإِنَّهُ أَغَضُّ لِلْبَصَرِ فَإِنَّهُ أَغَضُّ لِلْبَصَرِ Because that is what allows you to lower your gaze. وَأَحْصَلُ لِلْفَرْجِ وَأَحْصَلُ لِلْفَرْجِ And it is what safeguards, it's a fortress for your private part. The one who doesn't have the ba'a, he doesn't have the financial ability, or he physically can't fulfill the desires. 
upon him is fasting. فَإِنَّهُ لَهُ وِجَاءٌ That is a wija. A wija, as we said, is to castrate. That castrates your desires. And it eradicates it and gets rid of it fully. As I said, this hadith is narrated by Bukhari and Muslim. And the wording of it is the wording of Imam al-Bukhari, rahimahullah. So here this hadith allows us to understand that marriage is a prophetic guidance. It is Hadju Nabiina. It is the guidance of our Prophet. And also the Prophet who came before him. It is from his Sunnah alayhi salatu wasalam. It is from what? It is from his it is from his Sunnah alayhi salatu wasalam. And to turn away from marriage without a justified reason. Al Iradu Anizawaji to turn away from marriage. Min ghayri udrin shar'i without having a legislated reason. It is you having if you do that then it means you have passion in other than the Sunnah. Your desire you want uh, to be on a path other than the path of the Prophet, which is you having Rabbah Ragba and Sunnati Nabiina sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And that is based on the hadith of Bukhari and Muslim. And the wording is the wording of Imam al-Bukhari in hadith Anas ibn Malikin, in which he said, جَاءَ ثَلَاثَةُ رَحْطٍ إِلَىٰ بُيُوتِ أَزْوَاجِ النَّبِي صلى الله عليه وسلم. Three men. They came to the house of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. يَسْأَلُونَ عَلَىٰ عِبَادَةِ النَّبِي. And they asked the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم's worship. How is his ibadah like? What kind of person is he when it comes to worshipping Allah tabaraka? When it comes to worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَلَمَّا أُخْبِرُوا when, when, when they were told and they were informed كَأَنَّهُمْ تَقَالُوهَا They kind of they kind of belittled the ibadah that was told to them. So we don't say they belittled the Prophet but they belittled the ibadah that was told to them. And Ibn Hajar, if I'm not wrong and because it was a long time when I looked at it Ibn Hajar mentions the reason why they belittled the ibadah was from the direction of who told them. The person who conveyed it to them Huh? And the explanation that they gave to them was something they belittled. But in the reality and the real essence of the Prophet's ibadah is not something a person can belittle. The reason why is because he used to pray salawatullahi wasalamu alayhi hatta yatawarrat qadamah until his legs would swell and it would bleed. So somebody like that, his worship is not something you can, you can belittle. But anyways, they said, where are we from the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Aina nahnu? Aina nahnu minan Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam qad ghufira lahu ma taqaddam min dhanbihi wa ma taakhar. He has been forgiven for his past sins and he's also been, he's going to be forgiven for his upcoming sins. So where are we from him? If he's doing this ibadah, if he's working hard and he's also forgiven, then who are we? Who are we in comparison to him? So one of them said, أَمَّا أَنَا أَسْ فَوْ مِي فَإِنِّي أَصُومُ فَإِنِّي أُصَلِّ اللَّيْلَ أَبَدًا I'm going to pray every night forever. وَقَالَ آخَرُ Another one said أَنَا أَصُومُ I'm going to fast أَدَّهْرَ وَلَا أُفْدِرْ I'm going to fast continuously and I'm not going to break my fast. The other one he said أَنَا أَعْتَزِلُ النِّسَاء I'm going to distance myself from women I'm going to leave the women فَلَا أَتَزَوَّجُ أَبَدًا and I will never get married. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam came and he said to them, أَنْتُمُ الَّذِينَ قُلْتُمْ كَذَا وَكَذَا Are you the guys, are you the individuals who have said this, 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 this? Then they said yes. Then the Prophet said to them, أَمَّا وَاللَّهِ by Allah, إِنِّي لَأَخْشَاكُمْ لِلَّهِ I am the one who fears Allah the most. وَأَتْقَاكُمْ لَهُ And I am the one who has the most piety. لَكِنِّي أَصُومُ وَأُفْطِرْ But I fast and I break my fast. وَأُصَلِّي وَأَرْقُدْ And I pray and then I sleep and relax. I lay down. وَأَتَزَوَّجُ النِّسَاء And I marry women. فَمَنْ رَغِبَ عَنْ سُنَّتِي فَلَيْسَ مِنِّي Anyone who shows desires, who shows passion to other than my sunnah is not from me. So those two hadiths, which hadiths are, two hadiths am I referring to my beloved brothers and sisters? The first two hadiths that I'm referring to here is 
and I'm still on the first hadith by the way, let me just explain in the first hadith, is the last hadith of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala, uh, sorry, the first hadith of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud which is in Sahihin, are you with me? And the wording is the wording of Imam al-Bukhari, and the second one which is the hadith of Anas ibn Malik, which is also in Bukhari and Muslim, and the wording of Imam al-Bukhari. Both those narrations, they show us how the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa urged, how he pushed uh, one to marrying. But the second hadith gives us another understanding, which is that marriage is the Prophet's ma- m- guidance. It's his sunnah. It is, it, it is his tradition, alayhi salatu wasalam. So one should not say, or a person should not say, well, I don't want to get married. And he's able to get married. And he has the ability to get married. Also, this hadith, my beloved brothers and sisters, to the youths, youngsters, this hadith teaches us that marriage is what can pr- allow you to lower your gaze. It makes a person lower their gaze. Once you do get married, because you have your desires fulfilled, you now lower your gaze. It, pr- it allows you to focus on other things in life now. Whereas when you're not married, huh, then your mind is is always thinking about this. وَأَحْسَنُ لِلْفَرْجِ It's also, marriage is also a fortress. When you get married, it's like a fortress that protects you from what's outside. Getting married protects your private part from, from you going to commit haram. Now, the Sharia, which inshallah ta'ala I'm going to expand on it later when I go to the hadith to come. But what allows the man, what allows a man to lower his gaze and for his, and for his, for, for his private part to be protected from going to fulfill anything which is haram is when he has a wife who fulfills his needs. Who fulfills his sexual drive. If the wife, her existence is like her absence. If she's like a person who's not even there asalatan. She's not there to fulfill her husband's needs. She does not dress up for him. In which he can then focus on her appearance. Then... A lot of the times the problem that occurs is that individual is lowering the gaze. This man, he won't lower his gaze. And his private part is not protected for him. Now that doesn't mean, that doesn't mean that if the wife is not fulfilling the sexual drive of the man, then he's allowed to go and look around and he's allowed to go and commit zina. It doesn't mean that. But what it means is that the marriage here that's been spoken about, which the youngster, the youth is so told to go and get married. Because it will protect you and it will allow you to lower your gaze. And it will also protect your private part means the wife who when you go home and you look at her, she's there to dress for her husband, to look beautiful and appealing to him. And she's also ready to fulfill his desires. But a wife that doesn't do that, then the husband will lack the two of those characteristics from that marriage. Meaning for him to lower his gaze or for him, for his, for him to protect his private part. Vice versa, vice versa. In other words, well, aksu sahih, the opposite is true, true as well. If the husband isn't doing the same, if the husband is not fulfilling the desires of his wife, and he is not doing what she needs from him, uh, then also it causes a problem, especially in this society that we're living in, in the West, where the doors of fahsha and munkarat are open. A husband has to realize that the wife hasn't left her house. Your wife, when she got married to you, she didn't walk away from her dad's house and her mom's house for a food and a shelter. She had those two in her parents' house. She had that in her parents' house. She left her parents' house so you can fulfill her desires. So if she's in your life and you're not doing that, then it also becomes a problem for her to lower her gaze and for her to protect her private part. And brothers and sisters, this is very important that we understand this. Because you find on both sides, there's a complaint on this issue. A wife that complains of her husband 
depriving her from this rights of hers. And so she feels huh, that her husband is not doing her justice. And you also find men who say the same about their wives. That she is not fulfilling what I need from her as a husband. My desires. So this causes big problems. It causes a big problem. And that we need to keep that in mind. Then the hadith, the next part of the hadith, it says, There comes a person who is not able to financially get married. He does not have the ability. So what is upon him? This individual, it is upon him to fast. He has to fast. What I mean by fasting is that you stay away from food and drinking. You stay away from your shahawat, your desires. From sunrise to sunset. Look at this, it's very important that we analyze this hadith and we understand it properly. The hadith says get married if you're able to and if not fast. It didn't give you a third option. The third option that nowadays the youngsters and the youths have given one another is to fulfill their desires by using their body, body parts. For example, they use their hands to fulfill their desires. Al-Istimna, which is that the person, he uses his hands to fulfill his desires. Men or women. This shar'a la yajuz. In the sharia, it is not permissible and it's haram. And it falls under the statement of Allah when Allah mentions the issue of marriage and the men getting married. Look what Allah said. وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ لِفُرُوجِهِمْ حَافِظُونَ those who safeguard their private parts. Who do they safeguard it for? Their wives and that which their right hand possesses. Then the ayah says, And anybody who then tries to look for another way to fulfill his desires, then they are the ones who have exceeded their limits. They are the transgressors. They are the criminals. Pay attention here. They protect their private parts so they can fulfill it with their wives and that which their right hands possess. But the ayah after that it says, if they try to find a means other than the aforementioned, then they are transgressors and criminals. So, these are the methods and forms which people fulfill their desires without their wives and the, the husband and the wife. So the person isn't married, he doesn't, he's not able to get married, he wants to get married, but he goes out and he fulfills his desires by, for instance, masturbating or things like that. This is not permissible. Rather, it is realized this is from the Nahiyah of the Sharia, from the angle of the Sharia, we've already mentioned it's haram. And the Sharia only gave us fasting as an option. But medically, it will, it's realized medically that it has great side effects. And that it could cause a lot of harm, a lot of illnesses to the male who does this. And you have to know, my beloved brothers and sisters, if the Sharia closes a door, if it blocks a door, if it, then that door, it, the reason why it got closed is for your own maslaha. It is for your own good and for your own benefit. If you fast, فَإِنَّ لَهُ That fasting, that fasting, male or female, it will castrate your desires, meaning you will not have what? You will not have shahwa. You will be like an animal who got castrated, whose vein in his testicles was taken out, no more huh? sexual drive. Fasting, that's what it will do to you. So if the Prophet ﷺ is saying that this is what fasting does to you, it will get rid of your desires for you wanting to go commit zina, then we believe what the Prophet ﷺ said. 
what the Prophet alayhi salatu wassalam said. فَعَلَيْهِ بِالصَّوْمِ فَإِنَّ لَهُ وِجَاءٌ Fasting is a form to get rid of that drive. The reason why is because fasting, as they say, it tightens, it tightens your veins. When you fast, your blood flow goes slow. That's one thing that's good, especially uh, with the, when it comes to the issue of sexual drive. Second thing is, Shaitan runs in the vein of the human being. In Shaitan yajri min ibn Adam dam. The Shaitan runs in the person's veins. So once you fast, you are weakening Shaitan. You are weakening him, and so because of that, his whispers and his speaking to you will become much less. So that's the first hadith that we're going to take, inshaAllah Taala, which basically is to urge. It is to urge. People to get married. Targhibu fi zawaji. Urging. The second hadith is the second hadith is a hadith which Imam al Tirmidhi and Nasa'i and Ibn Majah narrated. And Imam al Tirmidhi and Imam al Nasa'i and Ibn Majah narrated. On the authority of Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu. That the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said, Thalathatun. حق على الله عز وجل عونهم المكاتب الذي يريد الأداء والناكح الذي يريد العفافة والمجاهد في سبيل الله three الله سبحانه وتعالى placed it on himself to aid them to support them three types of individuals Allah made it binding on Himself to aid them and support them. From those three, which is the one that concerns us, is The one who wants to get married to protect and to be chaste. To protect his private part and to be chaste. That's the, gay, that's the aim and objective and why he wants to get married. He is doing it afafan. He's doing it to be just. He doesn't want to go and commit zila. If a person is sincere and he really wants to get married, for what reason? To protect himself from the haram. Allah is going to aid you. And Allah is going to support you. Allah is going to aid you with what? He will aid you with financial support, inshaAllah ta'ala. And Allah will aid you also by keeping you chaste. Ibn Kathir, rahimahullah, he said, وَالْمَعْهُودُ That which is known مِنْ كَرَمِ اللَّهِ From the generosity and the kindness of Allah تبارك وتعالى is وَلُطْفِهِ And his tenderness, kindness رِزْقُهُ وَإِيَّاهَا بِمَا فِيهِ كِفَايَةُ اللَّهُ وَلَهَا Allah provides for you something that suffices you and suffices the woman you're going to get married to. This is a, Allah takes it on himself. And this, wallahi, the first part of the hadith mentions it. Thalathatun, three types of people. Haqqun ala Allahi. The haqqun ala Allahi here means what? Tafaddulun min Allahi. It is a virtue from Allah on his slaves. I'm going to bestow my mercy on you by doing this to you. You want to get married? Allah will make you. He will allow you to get married. Find you the finance and the money. And I've seen people who were struggling and they didn't have the money. And once they got married, Allah opened doors for them. وَأَنْكِحُوا الْأَيَامَ مِنْكُمْ وَصَالِحِينَ مِنْ عِبَادِكُمْ وَإِمَائِكُمْ إِنْ يَكُونُوا فُقَرَاءَ يُغْنِهِمُ اللَّهُ مِنْ فَضْرِهِ If you're faqir, Allah will provide you. That's what Allah says. إِنْ يَكُونُوا فُقَرَاءَ If they are poor, Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, He will provide for them. So Allah says, إِنْ يَكُونُوا فُقَرَاءَ If they are فُقَرَاءَ مَسَاكِينَ Allah will make them rich from himself. 
But what does the ayah begin to say? وَأَنْكِحُ الْأَيَامَ مِنْكُمْ Marry off the girls that you have. If a poor person comes to you, don't worry, Allah is going to provide you for it. لَأَنَّهُ Why wouldn't Allah provide for him? He is أَنَّاكِحُ الَّذِي يُرِيدُ الْأَعْفَرِ He is a, he's a person who wants to get married and he's trust. <coughs> So this, my brother, my brothers and sisters, those of us who have women, or uh, daughters, those of us who has who have daughters, whose daughters are mature and they're with us, and you see a brother who sincerely wants to get married, then why would we hold back our daughters from marrying them off to these brothers? Why will we? With the condition, of course, that our daughter is willing and is and wants to get married. She also doesn't mind us marrying her off to this individual. So those are the two hadith, inshallah ta'ala, that I'm going to be speaking about in this series, the first series, inshallah ta'ala. And those, those two hadith is al-hadith al-waridah, hadith that have come pertaining to al-targhib fi zawaj, urging people to get married. Anything which I had said that was wrong is for me and Shaitan and Allah and His Messenger are free from it. Subhanakallahumma bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha illallah. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayh.